Hi, this is Pink for PETA. If you're like most people, then you already refuse to wear fur because of the obvious cruelty to animals involved. Like me, you may even look for the stylish alternatives to leather. But what about wool? Most of us have never thought about it. Sadly, like any industry that uses animals, the wool trade uses methods so sadistic that it makes you consider clearing your closet of any animal products. Let's take a look and you decide for yourself. And I warn you, you might want to have a barf bag nearby. Far more wool comes from Australia than from any other country, mostly from Merino sheep, who aren't native to Australia's hot climate. Merino sheep have been greedily bred to have as much skin as possible, and therefore more wool. These Frankenstein sheep get such massive folds in their skin that they can't even crap properly. Flies lay eggs in these folds, and the hatched maggots can eat the sheep alive. Using the cheapest, cruelest, and crudest way to combat this so-called fly strike, farmers throw these gentle lambs onto their backs and restrain their legs between metal bars. Then, without any pain relief at all, they use gardening shears to carve out giant chunks of flesh from the lamb's rumps, creating scar tissue that makes it hard for flies to lay their eggs there. But some of the wounds get infected, and flies still strike and even kill the lambs. There are humane alternatives to mutilating sheep, such as occasional shearing under the tail, using fly traps, monitoring sheep closely to identify and treat fly strike, or simply using sheep better suited to the hot climate. Some Australian farmers refuse to carry out this ungodly practice, but most still choose to mutilate millions of lambs each year simply because it's the cheapest thing to do. When you see the Merino label, this is what you're paying for, but that's not all. After they've been used for their wool, sheep from Australia, Argentina, and some other countries are routinely shipped to the Middle East for slaughter. Crammed into ships many stories high, stacked on top of each other, they are sent on sea voyages that last for weeks, enduring miserably hot, cramped, and filthy conditions, and in a constant state of panic. Navy captains tell PETA that you can smell sheep ships coming long before you can even see them. Imagine what it's like on board. Every year, tens of thousands of sheep die en route from injuries, or because they're unable to reach food, and many others become ill living in their own waste. Some are thrown overboard to sharks, and these are the lucky ones. Once the survivors arrive at their final destination, usually the Middle East, Asia, or North Africa, where animal welfare standards are generally non-existent, the sheep are kicked and prodded onto trucks by their ears and legs. Animals there are not stunned prior to slaughter. This means that completely conscious animals are dragged into slaughterhouses and market squares where their throats are slit. Many are thrown on top of other slaughtered sheep where they slowly bleed to death. This sheep, like so many others, is still conscious as her legs are hacked off and the butchers begin to dismember and skin her. What can we do about all this? First, please join PETA's boycott of Australian wool until Australia bans the mutilation of sheep and stops allowing live exports. Another way to use your power as a consumer to stop cruelty is to avoid wool altogether. The picture isn't a whole lot prettier for sheep in China, Turkey, Iran, and other big wool producing countries. I know this sounds like a pain in the ass, but it's not so difficult. There are lots of clothes to buy for a look that kills without killing anything. Please visit PETA.org for more information. Thank you.